The Crow of Salvation, Thoughts. Isn't it interesting how when, maybe it's one of the time he confronts Dunst's character, he's telling her how something Lauren found out killed her, and then he insists that she should know too. Um, yeah. Jodie Lynn O'Keefe, hot though she is, she's always playing something kind of creepy and unnerving, and sometimes also goth. In this, she's the dead girlfriend. She just always, is it like, is it in her contract, you know, that she just, she has to be something that is going to freak some people out? So, I get that he heals and all, but why did the crow slam his hand down on that pointy thing with the paper on it? <laughs> did the crow tell him to? The whole idea of the crow and him sort of communicating a little bit, the crow kind of guides him some of the time. That wasn't too bad. I liked some of how this took a slightly different approach to the relationship between him and the crow. In the first it's very vague. In this one it seems like sometimes Alex can transform into the crow. It's like sometimes he is the crow, the bird itself, and sometimes both of them are there. And I liked him, maybe not flying, but sort of floating down onto the car there at the end. That was very crow-ish, you know, that was very much like a bird of prey just zeroing in on its target. And yeah, that really worked. Although I'm not entirely sure why they felt the need to cut from him realizing that Fred Ward had scars to, you know, him in the electric chair. He was still in a car and Lord, you know, not Lauren, Dunst's character was still right next to him. It might still be a bit difficult for, you know, Alex to get a hold of him. I mean, other than the one arm. In this, the crow seems to leave behind the calling card of a crow drawn in something, like in the second movie. But in this, I, f I think it gets away with it better. They are pretty creepy, even if he does keep using the blood one at least two or three times. But, you know, the blood crow on the roof of the car, and the crow made of a broken mirror, that, yeah, it's pretty disturbing, and it's, it's memorable. So, why was Alex so okay with killing, you know, those cops? You know, he blows up a, a couple of cop cars, a cop chopper. How could he be so sure that those cops were dirty, too? And then, you know, near the end, he shoots a lot of cops also, that did kind of work with, you know, the idea that then, you know, Fred shows him the photoshopped image and instills doubt in him, and that was a pretty good idea, but, again, it's underdeveloped, you know, if that had been more of a thing, like, along the way he had occasionally doubted about it, or we had gotten more ambiguity surrounding it, like, it's, the film seemed to be pretty much just on his side, and then suddenly we have this other character saying, no, you're wrong, and, you know, a couple of moments later we realize, oh, that was just, you know, him tricking him, you know, I guess, doubt killed the crow, and it would be nice with some ambiguity to that, because, you know, the whole vigilante thing is a bit morally ambiguous, you know, is it entirely okay, you know, I, I do like that the film does also see some doubts about, you know, capital
capital punishment that you know someone killed through that method was not the actual criminal you know although then again you know maybe the capital punishment the pro capital punishment people will then point to the movie and say well see all that'll happen if we kill the wrong person is he'll come back supernaturally okay maybe not but I wouldn't put it past them. And I suppose that's about what there is to go into. Well, I like the poetic justice, which there was at least a little bit of, you know, the stabbing that first guy the 53 times, and yeah, that was more or less it, I guess. Well, and, you know, Fred Ward in the chair with the blood boiling out of the scars that he had made, you know, on his arm. Each of these films seem to go for the creepy woman who, you know, who's really into the, the crow mythology thing. This one was maybe the least memorable of them. I do like that they didn't over-explain the mythology either. They only had a couple of lines because Fred Ward's character had read about this sort of thing. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.